All right, for everybody who was absent uh, the day that we went over the 5.2a uh, uh, lesson, I'm going to go ahead and make this video so you guys can make sure that you have everything needed. Um, going over the warm-up here that was skipped on the video, we're going to take a look at this picture and identify different markings. Um, here we're saying that if ray FB is blank to, to segment FC, well, let's take a look at ray FB. Ray FB, if you look at, is going to be from point F to B right here. And we're talking about it's something with segment FC, which FC will be right here, segment FC. So when you look at what identify marker do we see that we can name what its relationship is. And what I see here is a 90 degree angle. So we're not going to say is 90 degrees. We need to make sure that we're getting used to seeing that word and using the word perpendicular. So ray FB is perpendicular. And remember above, I'm going to write in what that perpendicular sign looks like to segment FC. So if this holds true, which it does, then, then angle BFC, so we find angle BFC is a right angle. Okay, so what that's going to mean is that the measurement of angle BFC equals 90 degrees, as we know. Okay, now let's look at F. F is just a single letter, so we know it's going to be a point. So let's go find point F. Point F is right here. It is going to be a blank of segment AC. So that point in regards to segment AC right here, what can we say its relationship is? Well, I see here that segment AC has been bisected. So it's the point F is going to be in the middle, so we'll call it a bisector because a point in the middle is going to be a midpoint. And this will create our two congruent segments. Segment AF will be congruent to segment FC. And we remember that our measurements will be equal. So the length of AF will be equal to the length of FC. The last one in this warm up, we are looking at ray FD. So we come over here to F to D, so we're looking at ray FD right here. We want to know its relationship to angle EDC. So we're looking at angle EDC. So what we're going to see here is we see these little congruent markings here. So we know that if ray FD is creating two congruent segments with the larger angle, angle EFC, it is bisecting. So this is going to be an angle bisector. Remember our angle symbol up there as well. So this is going to create two congruent angles. So we'll have angle EFD is going to be congruent to angle DFC. Remembering also that our measurements will be equal. So the measurement of angle EFD is equal to the measurement of angle DFC. In the video, uh, example number one was worked out. Example number two, we wanted you guys to try on your own using the exact same shape. Well, these notes are not filled out um, with what was in the video, but if you did watch the lesson, which you should have, um, we're, we suggested that we draw this same triangle, but draw it again. That way you're not having to use the exact same triangle so we can label this triangle as well. So I'm just going to label it exactly like what I had on example number one. Okay. <clears throat> and then here we are seeing that segment BG is going to be the median, which what does that mean? Well, if BG right here is the median, that's going to tell us that the length of the measurement of AG is going to be equal to the measurement of GC. So we're going to have two congruent segments right here. So they give us this math. There is a correction we need to make because um, when I did the math, I realized we came out with a negative distance using these, uh, using these algebraic expressions, which we can't have negative. So we're going to change this. CG is equal to 4X 
plus 30. And then it'll work out perfectly for us. Okay. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and label everything. We have, um, we're going to find AC, so we need to make sure that that is highlighted so we know we're not just solving for X. Okay, so we're going to find AC, which is going to be this entire section right here. And we'll go ahead and label that AG right here is 8X minus 10, and CG is 4X plus 30. Now, since they are congruent, their measurements are equal. Therefore, I'm just going to really just kind of fade and see if that light will help at all. So we're going to set them equal to each other, just like we did in example number one. So we will have 8x minus 10 is equal to 4x plus 30. And we'll go through our process of solving for x. I'm going to subtract that 4x from both sides. I'm left with 4x minus 10 is equal to, the 4x is gone over here, 30. Let's move our constant to the other side, so add that 10 to get rid of it on the left. We have 4x equals 40. Last step here, divide by 4. x is going to equal 10. Now that's only half the battle. We need to remember our segment addition postulate. We are looking for the entire section here. So we're going to find AC, which is equal to what we see up here, is going to be equal to the, uh, it's going to be AG plus GC. So it's the exact same thing we did in example one. We just have the different numbers like Ms. Big said in the video. So now we'll go ahead and substitute in. AC is going to equal, well, AG was 8 times, and I'm going to plug in what I got for X, which was 10. And I have the minus 10. Then we're going to have to add GC, which was 4X, substituting in 10 for that X. That's what we found. And we end it with the plus 30. And I'll take it one extra step here. We're going to have AC equals 8 times 10 is 80 minus 10, plus 4 times 10 is 40, plus that 30. Now we just need to combine everything together. I see an 80 minus 10, so give me 70. I add 40, I'm going to get 110. I add another 30, I'm going to wind up with AC is going to equal 140. Now we moved on down to the centroid and what happens when you have three medians that are going to intersect. So what we're going to do is go ahead and go to the worksheet that we started filling out on the first day. Mind, I had to tape this on because I just ended up with two different versions. But we're just going to, we, we filled in the first two columns. We're going to focus, now we're looking at median. So we're going to come over here to your points of concur uh, concurrency. The C for points of concurrency for your median, as we remember from our other notes, was a centroid. Okay, kind of sounds like a biorobotic alien or something. Now your centroid is going to consist of, when we fill in these blanks over here, it's going to be where three medians intersect. When they intersect, this, in, this uh, centroid, this point of uh, concurrency is going to be inside the triangle. All the time, no matter where, no matter what kind of triangle we have, your, med your centroid for your medians will always be inside the triangle. And as stated um, also in the previous notes, this is going to be your center of mass or balance. It's going to be that balance point. Ms. Big said in the video that if you take a pencil and you put the centroid on the tip of the pencil, it'll balance that triangle out. And we also talked briefly about that theorem where um, your centroid theorem says the point, the centroid, is two-thirds the distance from the vertices. So we'll draw on our centroids, real, or draw on our three medians real quick, and so we can see where our centroid is. So if we start with the top vertex. We need to remember we're going down to the midpoint, down to the opposite side. So we want to make sure that we go from the vertex to that midpoint. So I'm eyeballing that midpoint, putting my markings so I know that this is going to be a midpoint, and then we'll trace that line straight down to the midpoint. Now whether you want to rotate the triangle or not, we need to do the same thing for the other sides. So over here on this side, I'm going to eyeball that midpoint. Remember, and I have to put two congruent marks because I already have one over here, 
and we're going to match that midpoint. We're going to draw from that midpoint to the vertex on the other side. So here we're going to draw the straightest we can, and there's our second medium. And again, if it makes it easy for you to rotate your paper around, here I see my side. I'm going to eyeball that midpoint. We're going to put three little tick marks. And then our goal is because we're not using a ruler and we're not measuring, we're going to have to do this as best we can. But when we draw that third line, we know that all three of these mediums are going to intersect. So we just need to go from the vertex to that midpoint the best we can going through the other two mediums. And then here, what we have, that center point, this guy right here, is going to be our centroid. Okay. Now, remembering also in the video, uh, Ms. Biggs was mentioning about going from the vertex to the, the centroid is like saying 2x. From the centroid to the midpoint is going to be x. Okay, and that's that relationship there. Okay, so hopefully this worked out, and then we'll move on. The, I'll have another video for the, um, for the altitude, perpendicular bisector and altitude as we do those in class.